in this Halloween episode. Hold on. It's better. In this episode, we're making spider cookies, which in my opinion are a good mix between spooky and appetizing. These may look a little fancy, but I promise that they are very easy, not to mention delicious. So let's go! <laughs> Our base is going to be a classic sugar cookie. This recipe is pretty easy to remember because of the simple ratio 3 to 1 to 1. That's 3 cups flour, 1 cup butter, and 1 cup sugar. Ooh. So we'll start off with the butter, which we want room temperature, and then the sugar, and a little salt. And we're going to beat that on high for about 3 minutes. If you're doing this by hand, which is totally doable, don't focus on the time, just focus on getting this consistency. We want this mixture to be light and creamy. Next, we'll add our egg and vanilla and beat to incorporate. Before we add our flour, you have a decision to make. You are more than welcome to add some fall flavors to this cookie. You can use nutmeg, ground clove, allspice, cinnamon, maybe even some mace to get the full pumpkin spice milieu. Is it milieu? Hold on. Milieu. Milieu. The full pumpkin spice milieu. If you were to do that, you would whisk the spices into the flour before adding them to the dough. I'm speaking in hypotheticals because I'm not doing that, but you do you. These are your cookies after all. In any case, we'll add our flour, spiced or not, about a cup at a time, beating on low until almost all of the flour is incorporated. I say almost all because I want to finish mixing this with a rubber spatula, which will both prevent overmixing and work in any ingredients that were stuck to the bottom of the bowl. It's best to let this dough chill before rolling out, so after having an extended argument with your plastic wrap, shape your dough into a disc before putting it in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once that time is up, you can roll this out. I like to do it with some parchment paper like this. Since we're using cookie cutters, the shape doesn't really matter at all, but it is good to get a uniform thickness. Because of the high butter content in these cookies, it's best to work quickly to keep the dough from getting too sticky. You're looking for a uniform thickness of about a quarter inch. Extra credit if you have one of those nifty rolling pins with the spacers on the sides. Now cut out your shapes. For this design, I'm using a two and a half inch round cookie cutter, but if you don't have one of those, you can just use a glass, which may or may not be a little tricky. There's a better chance to prevent sticking if you dip your cutter in a little flour after each cut. Place your cookies on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper or a silicone mat. You can and should re-roll and cut out the excess dough. Just know that the smoothness and the texture will get a little worse with each iteration, but that is no reason to waste perfectly good cookie dough. We haven't preheated our oven at this point, and that was intentional, because we want to chill this dough some more. How much is really up to you, but as we saw in the aging cookie dough video, at least an hour of chilling is going to have a dramatic improvement on the taste and texture of our cookies. This can go up to two days if you want, but an hour is more than enough. And if you can't wait that long, just chill the dough for the amount of time it takes to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. You can see that I'm respacing my cookies before they go into the oven. They shouldn't spread much, but they will spread a small amount, so you want about an inch of space between each one. Bake for seven minutes, then check to see the color of your cookies. At seven minutes, I could see almost no color at the bottom, which means they weren't quite done. So I gave them a couple more minutes and I got this. That little line of brown means that your cookies are perfectly cooked. Now, these need to cool completely. So wait about five minutes before transferring them to a cooling rack. No heat can be coming off the cookie when you're icing it. Now it's time for decoration, which many people consider to be the fun part. For me, eating them is the fun part, but who am I to judge? First, we need to start off with our icing. Sift two cups of powdered sugar, also known in some circles as sugi sugi pow pow. This is just to get out the clumps that would plague you in your future. Next, add your milk, salt, and vanilla, and mix until you get this nice, smooth consistency. Now you'll want to set aside a half cup of this into a small piping bag. With the rest of it, we're going to mix in our black food coloring. Apparently, you can use this ratio to get a black color, but I wanted to take out the guesswork, so I got some black food coloring from my local craft store. Just mix that up until it looks spooky enough for you. My mission in developing this recipe was to get something that anyone can make. I am not an artist by any means. And as we'll see in a bit here, there's a lot of room for error in this decoration portion. Instead of piping the border and flooding, that always looks good on those amazing cookie decorating videos, but just ends up terrible when someone like me tries to do it, I'm going to use my very clean hands to dunk the face of this cookie into the black frosting. You will get some frosting on your fingers. Please don't lick that off unless these are just for you. Try to drip as much as possible off the face of the cookie before setting it down, or you'll get drips over the side. As you can see, I got a ton of drips, but it doesn't really matter. You know what does matter? Love and kindness. It's important that the frosting does not dry on the cookie at all before moving to the next step, so I'm only going to do about four of these before piping a target shape with the white frosting. The circles don't need to be perfect, as you'll see in a second here. Once you have your targets done, take a toothpick or cake tester, place it at the center of the cookie, then drag it in a straight line to the outside of the cookie. Do this as many times as you want, but I found that I liked how they turned out when I did a bunch of these lines in a row. And now you have a neat little spiderweb effect. Continue this until all of your cookies are done, 
and let them dry completely, which will take about two hours. Now, I think these are cool enough to share with your friends, but if you want to take them to the next level, we can add a little inhabitant. First, melt some chocolate. You can do this in the microwave, but I don't have one, so I'm using a double boiler. Over some barely simmering water, I'm putting a heatproof bowl, I'm breaking up some chocolate, and stirring until it's all melted. That's going to a piping bag, and we're ready to go. You're going to use the chocolate as a glue for the spider's body, so give a little dab in the middle and place a peanut M&M on the chocolate. Then another dab, and use a regular M&M. Now you can just pipe little chocolate legs on each side. Remember, spiders have eight. That's part of what makes them so cute. Let that chocolate set, and you have a pretty darn cute, relatively simple Halloween dessert to impress all your friends. If you really want to up the cuteness factor, you can add some candy eyes if you have them around. I like these because they're festive, but not gross looking. I never understood gross looking Halloween food. I want to be excited when I eat something, not apprehensive. Anyways, these not only look great, they also taste very good. So please try them out soon. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.